Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do a root locus example. First we'll sketch it, and then take a look at it in MATLAB. So here's the characteristic equation that we'll work with, and a couple things before we get started is that we want to write the characteristic equation in this form so that we can extract out the loop transfer function, which is the quantity we need for the root locus. We also want to keep in mind a couple of the fundamental root locus equations, and that is that the magnitude of the loop transfer function evaluated at some point in the complex plane S0 is equal to 1 over k, and also that the phase of the loop transfer function evaluated at any point on the root locus, x0, is equal to some multiple of 180 degrees. I'll write it as 180, but it could be 180, negative 180, 360, etc. With that, let's get started. So, what I'll do is, is divide the characteristic equation by that quantity. Basically, all the stuff that doesn't have k in it. Because when I do that, I'll pick up a 1 there, and then I'll get k plus k times the loop transfer function. I can pretty much see that by inspection now that f of s is going to equal 1 plus k times s plus 3 over s squared plus 2s plus 2. So my number of zeros, m, is 1. My number of poles is n, that's 2. And the poles of that loop transfer function are at, let's see, negative 1 plus or minus j. So I've got quite a bit of information. These are my k equals 0 points, the poles of the loop transfer function, and this is a k equal infinity point. So I can actually start sketching the root locus. So here's a handy little plot. Let's put in our k equals 0 and k equal infinity points. Let's see, it was negative 1 plus j. This is the real and imaginary axis, of course. And then we had a k equal infinity point out here. And I should always label these things. So k equal uh, 0 and k equal infinity. Well, since I have this plot here, let's go ahead and do the root locus on the real axis. We only have one quantity, one uh, k equals 0 or k equal infinity point, and in this case it's k equal infinity, we only have one on the real axis. So it divides the real axis up into two segments. This segment and this segment. Now what I'll do is, is start with this segment right here, and look to the right of it, count up the number of poles and zeros on the real axis. It's even, so I know there's no root locus. Now I look at this segment, count up the poles and zeros on the real axis to the right of it, and it's one. So I do have root locus there. So I indicate that with a little hash mark. Now already we can start getting some insight into what's going to happen. We know we're going to have root locus on the real axis right here, where I have the hash marks. But there's no root locus there yet. So we can sort of see what needs to happen. I'm going to have root locus branches leaving from these two points. And eventually they're going to enter into the real axis somewhere. And then one branch will go this way, and another branch will go off to infinity. So out here is k equal infinity. Okay, well let me get rid of these little arrows, because that'll just clutter up the, the business as we move forward. What we don't know, though, is could the root locus loop over here into the complex plane, and then, or into the right half plane, and then enter into the real axis? Or does it go in some nice way like this? Who knows? But well, we can find that out as we move through our sketching rules. Okay, well why don't we go after uh, determining if we have root locus that crosses that imaginary axis. And the way to do that is with a Routh array. So, we'll go back to the characteristic equation, which was this. Oops, that's a ks, plus 3k equals 0. And I'm going to group terms a little bit. 
s squared plus, let's see, 2 plus k s, boom, boom, plus 2 plus 3 k. And now I'll make the Ralph array, s squared, s1, s0, 1, 2 plus 3 k, 2 plus k, 0. And what I do in order to see if I have root locus on the imaginary axis is I find the value of k that makes that row all zero. Because when I do that, that will give me an auxiliary equation from this equation, the row above it. So I can see that k equals negative 2 to make this row all zero. Well, the root locus is all possible closed loop pole locations for all possible positive values of k. So this is not legitimate. So what I conclude from this is that there is no way to make an auxiliary equation and what that tells me is there's no imaginary axis crossing. Well, it's a useful bit of information. So I know a little bit more about the sketch, but I really can't put anything into the sketch with that information. I just know that I'm not going to go into the right half plane. Well, let's look back at this picture again. Well, we know that we're going to have root locus coming into that real axis somehow. So let's see if we can calculate that. And we call that a breakaway, or in this case, a break-in point. And the way that we calculate that is we look at d gl ds equals zero. We find all values of s that satisfy that equation and then see if they make sense for that break-in point. So let's see, our gl was s plus 3 over s squared plus 2s plus 2. So I'll go ahead and form d gl ds and I'll have s squared plus 2s plus 2. I'm doing the quotient rule minus, let's see, 2s plus 2 times s plus 3 all over this denominator squared. But who cares, because I'm just going to set this equal to 0 and just focus on the numerator. So if I expand out that numerator a little bit, I'll have minus 2s squared minus 6s minus 2s minus 6. Set that equal to 0. Minus s squared, using combining those two things, see minus 8s plus 2s, so minus 6s, and when I combine those up I'll get minus 4. So I'll write this as s squared plus 6s plus 4, and solve for its roots. I'll do that up here. s1, 2, equals negative 6 plus minus square root of 36 minus 16 over 2 and wow I get negative 3 plus minus square root of 5 and the two roots are let's see that's about negative 0.76 and negative 5.24 great so those are my two options for break-in points let's take a look at that grid again and see which one makes sense I had negative 0.76 and negative 5.24. Well, this one doesn't make any sense because there's no root locus right about there. However, the other one, negative 5.24, makes a lot of sense. So there is our break-in point. Let's see, about the only other thing we can do at this point is to understand how the root locus leaves these poles. I know it's going to leave them. I know it doesn't go into the, the right half plane, but I know it's going to leave. Does it go like that? Or does it go like this? Or does it go like that? Let's see if we can figure that out. The way we'll do that is we'll use that equation, the phase of GL at any point S on the root locus is equal to 180. And let me just expand a little bit on the k equals zero point that was in the complex plane that I was just playing with a minute ago. See, it was sitting like that. I guess I'll just draw the whole thing. 
we had something that looks roughly like that. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to postulate that there is a point that is just very close to this k equals zero point. So let's say k equal 0 0.001. Well, that means that the root locus has left this spot, this k equals zero point, and moved just a little bit into the complex plane. Let's say that it moved to here. That tells me that I actually have an angle between this point, this k equals zero point, and that little point. And I could draw an arrow up to it from this zero, that k equal infinity point, and from here. And when I do that, the sum of all of those phases should equal 180 degrees. Actually, it would be the phase angle of the zero, I'll call this phi z1, the phase angle associated with this pole, phi p1, and then the phase angle associated with that, phi p2. So phi z1 minus phi p1 minus phi p2 should equal 180 degrees. Now what we do is, is we let this little dot move back to the k equals zero point, infinitesimally close. And as I do that, I can then solve for phi p2 that satisfies this equation. So let me redraw this. Let's see, we had one plus or minus j. So if that's one, two, three, and we had a zero right there. So I'm imagining a point just very close to this k equals zero point. I'm gonna draw that arrow up to it and that arrow up to it. And again, this is my phi p1 and this is my phi z1. And then buried in here, I have a phi p2. When I calculate that phi p2, it'll tell me how the root locus leaves that k equals zero point. Okay, so phi z1 is equal to the inverse tangent of one over two. Phi p1 is 90 degrees, and phi p2 is what we're gonna solve for. That's equal 180. And let's see, so inverse tangent of one half is about 26.6 .6 minus phi p2 equals 270. So phi p2 is equal to negative 270 plus 26.6. .6. That's negative 243.4 or 116.6 if I think of it from the positive direction. So if I draw my reference line there, I now know that the root locus leaves this k equals zero point a little bit to the left of 90 degrees, roughly like that. And of course, the root locus will be symmetric about the real axis, so that tells me how the root locus leaves this k equal zero point also. Well, that's all the information we're gonna get out of this. So let's go ahead and sketch it. I'm gonna move this label, because now I see that those weren't the best places for that. K equals zero, K equals zero. And I know that my root locus is gonna leave like so, and like so, and it's going to bend around and enter the real axis here, like so, and then head off to those two k equal infinity points. So now I just have to connect this to this. There's a lot of ways I could do that, but the root locus is a nice looking shape. It doesn't do anything very strange. So that is about what we can get out of this. Now, it so happens that I have one created from MATLAB, and there it is. Here's the k equals zero point. Here's k equal infinity. Look at that. It hits the real axis at about 
24 or so. There's a nice angle of departure, about what we estimated, the 117 degrees. And then it bends around and goes into the real axis. But let's go ahead and make this in MATLAB ourselves and just take a look at it. I'll code in the loop transfer function. I'll just call it GL equals TF13122. And I could use our locus. GL. And there's a nice looking root locus. Looks very similar to what we saw on the previous page. I could put an S grid on that, which shows me lines of constant damping ratio. These little straight lines. And then lines of constant omega n. These arcs. Now if I use my point selection tool, I can click any point on here, and I'll see the gain associated with that uh, point, and also the closed loop pole locations. So if I wanted a design where my damping ratio was about 0.7, roughly 5% overshoot, I would click somewhere, ooh, maybe about there, damping 0.829, maybe not quite there, a gain of about four and a half. So that tells me that my proportional controller in this case needs to be four and a half, and I'd get a damping ratio of about 0.829. Of course, let's use another method. Let's use our tool for GL, or RL tool. And there's a root locus again. A little bit of information there. These are k equal one points. I can just grab these little guys now and move them around so I can dynamically see how the root locus moves as k goes to infinity or back up to k equals zero. Lots of interesting behaviors there. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.